Can you build a multiplayer VR game in just a few clicks? I don't know if you guys remember, but a few weeks ago, I shared with you in this video the new building blocks feature by Meta, which allow you to quickly set up your VR game by just dragging some blocks in your scene. It has blocks to show hands, controller, path through, grab object, poke, but in their latest update, Meta has now also added building blocks to set up multiplayer for both Photon Fusion and Unity Netcode for game object. So in this video, let me show you how you can build your own multiplayer VR game in just a few clicks with this new feature. But wait, because something super cool that they also added is a block for collocation multiplayer, which allow you to have multiplayer works for multiple person in the same room. So if you want to learn more about it and watch me use it to create my own mixed reality multiplayer game, you can join us on Patreon where I will share this exclusive tutorial. The link is in the description. But without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so let's set up our project for using building blocks. It is the same as in the other building blocks video. So I'm going to go a little bit farther here. So go watch the other video if you want more explanation. First, let's click on new project. Let's call it VR multiplayer select an organization, create project. Okay, next, because we are building for Quest devices, we need to go to File, Build Settings, select Android, and then click on Switch Platform. There you go, now it is time to install the Meta XR All-in-One SDK, which you can do so by going to this link here on the Asset Store. Then you can click on Download or Open in Unity. By the way, you will be able to find this link in the description down below. And as you can see, we can have a look at it here and we can click on install. We can say yes, that we want to restart the editor. And there you go. Now, if we go at the top to in project, you should see here all of the Meta XR packages installed. The version that I would be using for this project is 65, but any version above this one should work. There you go. Now that it is installed, we need to set up our project for XR, which we can do so by going to edit project settings. There we can go down below in the XR plugin management and click on install XR plugin management. Okay, now that the XR plugin management is installed, we want to select here Oculus to say that it is the plugin providers that we want to use for Android. Next, do the same, but on desktop and select Oculus as well. But for the other little settings, we can go at the top to Meta XR. And here, as you can see, for both Android and desktop, we have a bunch of elements inside this checklist that we can directly set up here to make everything works great for VR. So let's simply click on Fix All here, then on Apply All if necessary. Beautiful, we can go on Android and do the same. So Fix All and Apply All. Okay, now beautiful, as you can see, everything is verified in the checklist. So this means that now all the setup is done to use building blocks to create our VR multiplayer game. So let's close these windows and let's get started. Okay, so to open the building blocks, we simply need to go to Oculus, Tools, and then on Building Blocks. And there it is, as you can see, we can see all the building blocks that we can use for this project. And as you can see, there are plenty more than what there was before when I made the first tutorial, which is super cool to see that they are always adding some. Now, anyway, the one that we of course need is here the camera rig. So I'm going to select it and drag it here on the VR key. Beautiful. There we go. Now we can see that we have a camera rig, which is inside our VR project, which contains a VR camera for our player. But by the way, as you can see, the OVR manager has the Quest 3 disabled for some reason. So don't forget to enable it in case that you are using this headset. Now, if we go to the main camera, as you can see, it is disabled, of course, because what we want is use the camera from the camera rig, so this one. But we can simply select it and press on delete to remove it completely, not just disable it like the building block has done. And there it is. Now that we have a camera rig, it means that VR is working. By the way, you can click on play to already test it. But it is now time for the star of the show, the multiplayer building blocks. Now, as you can see, we have all of the little filters for the building blocks with multiplayer over there. We can click on it. And as you can see, we can have a look at all of the building blocks that we have. So let's first add here our auto matchmaking, which will be able to directly connect two players together. So let's click here and drag it in our scene. But as you can see, of course, to set up multiplayer, we need multiplayer package. And as you can see, there is two types of them. 
we have here the Unity netcode from GameObject, which is Unity own multiplayer solution, or UF Photon Fusion. Now, of course, the two are great choice for making a multiplayer game. The only noticeable difference that you should know is that right now, the player voice chat only works with Photon Fusion and not Unity Netcode for GameObject, which I hope they will fix later. But for the sake of this tutorial, I will personally stick with the Unity Netcode for GameObject. And as you can see, we need three things to enable multiplayer. We need Unity netcode package, we need the relay package, and we need the lobby package. So let's close these windows, put the building blocks aside, go to windows, package manager, there at the top go to unit registry and search for this package. So let's search for netcode. There it is, we have netcode for GameObject that we can install over there. Okay, now that netcode is downloaded, we can download as well relay. So relay is Unity own things to send data over the network. We can click on install to download it. Beautiful, and the last package that we need is the lobby. So let's search for lobby. And there it is, the lobby 1.2.1. Let's click on install. And there it is, guys. The three things that were missing for multiplayer inside this project are now there. The lobby, the relay, and the Unity netcode. So now we can close the package manager. There is one last thing that we want to make sure when we download these three multiplayer package from Unity, and it is that they are active in the Unity services, which we can do by going to Edit Project Settings. There, if you go to Services, you should see here this dashboard icon, which you can click on, and which will directly send you to the Unity dashboard link to your project. There you go. As you can see, we can see our VR multiplayer project that we built, and we can see that we have here Relay and Lobby. Let's click on Relay. We can click on Get Started. Next next and then finish beautiful this will enable relay on this project now let's click on lobby and do the same so next next finish beautiful and there you go now if we click back on relay we can see that it is enabled and we should have some data also showing over there and same for lobby this is where you can have some data about how lobby and relay both works inside your project but anyway now that it is down Everything is ready. Let's go back to our project. Let's close the project settings. Let's go back to our building blocks. And if we go to our multiplayer and then to auto matchmaking and try to add it this time again, as you can see, there is no more error. We can click on confirm. And there you go. Believe it or not, but now we have auto matchmaking working for our project, which means that when multiple player will connect to your application, they will be automatically connected to each other in the same lobby. Now, before continuing, of course, if you don't want to use the Unity netcode, but that you prefer Gen Photon Fusion, it is really the same as what I've just shown you. Basically, you need to download the Photon Fusion SDK from the Asset Store, and then you will have this window showing. And from there, you simply need to click on open the Photon dashboard, which in the same way as the Unity netcode for GameObject, will let you add an app ID over there to link the Unity project to Photon. Oh, and everything is detailed over there on this documentation, which you will find again in the description down below. Now, let's go back to our project. Okay, so if we have a look at what we currently have, we have here the network manager, which is, as the name suggests, able to manage the network. And if we go to the auto matchmaking, we can see here this auto matchmaking NGO script. As you can see, we can set the number of, the max number of players we want inside our game. I think it will work with four here. And if we double click on the script, you can have a look at everything that is doing here. Now, don't worry because everything is basically something that I've all previously shown in a tutorial series. And if we double click on the script, we can have a look at how this auto matchmaking NGO works. Now, by the way, if you want to see how to create this script from scratch, and make it your own, so not using a building blocks. I've previously made this tutorial, which will show you exactly this thing, which is automatically join two players together in the same room to connect them for multiplayer. 
And of course, this is something important to notice with this building block. They are great, but they also hide the complexity of elements. So sometimes it is a bit hard to build your own stuff on top of it if you don't know exactly how it was made. So that's why I strongly suggest you, even if these building blocks are great, to still have a look at how these things are working behind the curtains with the tutorials that I will link in the description. Now, anyway, two players can connect to our game. But of course, if two players were playing the same game, they would not see each other because the player have no avatar. Now on the multiplayer tutorial series that I made previously, what we did was actually go to the network manager and there on the player prefab, we've created a network prefab that will follow the hand and the head of the player so that the player can see each other. But with the building block, there is a better way to do this because if we go back to our building blocks, we can see here that we have the network avatar. So this is awesome. It means that we can use meta avatar directly inside here, this network setup. So let's have a look at this. Let's select it and drag it over there. But as you can see, we have another issue. We need to add this package. So let's simply select it, copy this text. We can then go back to windows, package manager, at the top, add package by name, and then pass this, this name. Let's click on add and it should install automatically the meta avatar package. There you go, you should have this window popping up asking you if you want to download the meta avatar SDK sample asset. So these are some pre-configured meta avatar that can be displayed if the user has not created a avatar of its own. So I think it's a great idea to have them inside this project. So let's click on yes. There you go, let's close this windows, then go back to our building blocks and drag our network avatar over there. And as you can see, it works. We can see that we have the network avatar showing. And as you can see with this avatar spawner NGO, it will spawn an avatar for each person. You can see all of the settings for the avatar over there. By the way, I've previously also made a tutorials about meta avatar, which you can have a look at over there and which will tell you a bit more about them. Also, you can see that there was another building blocks that was created when making, when adding the network avatar, and it is the platform init. So the platform init will basically just connect to Oculus platform to simply display the user own avatar that it can create on its quest. By the way, by default, the platform will try to uh, instantiate a random avatar. But if you really want to display the user own avatar, there is one more step that you need to do and it is to link your app ID within uh, the Unity editor. So for this, you can go to Oculus tools and then at the top to meta account setup guide. And this is where you need to do this. First, you need to click here and go to the quest developer dashboard. So for the quest developer dashboard, you can create an organization. I have binary right there and you can create a new app. Let's call it VR multiplayer, beautiful, select MetaQuest. There you go, it is now created. And then you can simply go to API and here just copy the ID of this application, go back to Unity and paste it over there. Then click on set. And as you can see, everything is now connected. You have now linked the Unity project with your Meta account, which will allow the user to show its own avatar. So now let's close this window. And there you go. I think it is now time for the moment of truth. We have a camera rig. We have an auto matchmaking to have multiple person see each other. And we have a network avatar to display where they are. So one thing is missing and it is to test our game. There are multiple ways to test our application, but I think the simplest one is to simply build it on the quest headset. And at the same time, click on play here to have two user testing this, the application directly. Now I have my quest headset directly plugged to my PC. So what I can do is go to file, build settings, make sure that the scene that we are currently at is inside the scene in build by clicking on add open scene. Beautiful, we can see it over there. And let's click on build and run to test our game. And there you go, guys. This is what you should see once you build the application. As you can see, I have my meta avatar showing right there and following my hands. But now let's see if two players can connect together by going back to Unity. Okay, so now that we are back to Unity, let's click on play. And there you go. As you can see, it works. The two person are now connected, as you can see, because I can see two avatars. We have the local avatar, so the one from Unity in this case, and the remote avatar, the one that has the build application. For example, if I wave my hand, 
I can see it as well in the Unity editor. Oh, and by the way, while I'm at it, uh, if you leave Playmore right there, now you can go to Oculus, Meta XR Simulator, click on Activate, because this way, if you click on Play, you will still be able to simulate the XR presence with this tool right there. So this is called the Meta XR Simulator. And as you can see, by using some shortcuts on my keyboard, I can move the avatar around and even interact with stuff. So this allows you to kind of see if on the two side everything is working. And everything seems to work because if I move on one side, I can see my avatar and the other way around as well. So everything seems to work. Okay, so at this point, feel free to have some fun with all of the building blocks. So there is one more that I want to add on this project and it is the network grabbable object. So if you drag it over there, as you can see, I'm going to disable the use gravity and click on confirm. And if we close the building blocks, we can maybe increase a bit the position of this cube so that it doesn't stay at the ground. And as you can see, this building block has a lot of things. First thing first, it has a client network transform, which means that its position will be synchronized over the network. But it also has a transfer ownership and GO, which means that when somebody select this cube, so when somebody grabs it, it will take ownership over it, which means that it will be the one responsible to move it. And then afterward, the client network transform will send the new position to all of the other clients. Oh, and by the way, by adding these building blocks, which as you can see has an end grab interactable and a grab interactable to let it be grabbed by controllers and hand tracking. By adding these two things, interaction building blocks, which if we have a look at down below, we can see that on the end interactor left, we have the end grab interactor to allow us to grab here this cube. Now, of course, you can build your game, send it to your friend to play together on the same multiplayer VR game. There you go guys, a VR multiplayer game built in a few clicks. I guess this is a good example to show how much can be achieved using building blocks in a short amount of time. Of course, this is not the end, because if you want to see me build a shared space multiplayer game, you can join us on Patreon, the link is in the description. As always, thank you for watching till the end, and a big shout out to my Patreon who will appear on the screen right now. Thank you for watching and see you soon, bye bye.